I'm singing the theme song to uh, Spider Pig. Ryan, you're familiar, you're familiar with Spider Pig? Uh, yes, I am familiar with Spider Pig. I believe he does whatever a Spider Pig does. Mm -hmm. And he, he can't spin a web because he's a pig. But uh, other, than, other than that, he's golden. Um, we, uh, we, we got uh, a, a bit of a grab bag episode. First of all, this is Infinity Rewatch. Welcome, everybody. Woo! I'm, woo, I'm Andrew. I am Ryan J. Whitehead. And man, Infinity Rewatch... The in, the uh, infinity just got bigger. It did. It got literally infinite. Uh, well, Ooh, more, <laughs> more infinite. More. It got infinite to the power of ten or something. It got exponentially <laughs> more infinite. Uh, Indeed. It was this. This is a special episode. It's it's a bit of a grab bag. Uh, obviously, in the title, you've probably guessed we we're going to be talking about that No Way Home final trailer, the one that dropped right now, literally five minutes before we started recording this on November 16th, 2021. But some other stuff happened last week that uh, we should quickly talk about. And uh, we'll do that before the trailer. But even before that, there's one little bit of housekeeping that we need to get out of the way. See, last time we were together, Ryan, and we recorded, you and I mm -hmm. did something that we have never done before and that we will probably never do again. And that's, we made a mistake. We left something out. Uh, we have a tradition here on this podcast that whenever somebody in the MCU dies, we give them a proper burial in the Marvel Memorial Cemetery, and we describe their graves because that's just that's only fair. And Eternals had a lot of deaths, and we talked about zero of them. Uh, <laughs> so I think True. it's only fair. Uh, it's it's only fair we give those those deaths, you know, some some love. And just, mm -hmm. you know, say, say some parting words before we, we move on. So, Ryan, what we need to do is give a final farewell and set up a memorial for Crow, for Gilgamesh, for Icarus, and for Ajax. Uh, what are you thinking? Uh, Icarus, uh, <laughs> I, I have to do the obvious one. Got too close to the sun, you know? Uh, I, it burns. I, can't, I can't argue with that. That is perfect. That mm -hmm. is perfect. Uh, Gilgamesh. Uh, um, uh, Gilgamesh, I guess you're cooked. Ooh. He should have a statue, like a stone statue of himself yeah. pulling out a big blueberry pie. From, <laughs> like, or is like, is like tombstone should be an oven, like you could put something in. Oh, it actually cooks. <laughs> Even in the afterlife, he's cooking you. You've, yeah, I like this. Yeah. He's making you pies from beyond the grave. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, well, a, sorry, go ahead. Or, yeah, or, yeah. No, no. We should get to Ajax. Um, Ajax. Uh, I guess you can't heal from this one. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being savage. I'm being You're savage on a on mean one. streak. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry, again sorry. nothing more accurate and then finally crow uh didn't know you well enough <laughs> and now you're gone crow crow's um name on the tombstone is like it's spelled k-r-o question mark and then c-r-o period <laughs> <laughs> yeah Oh uh, man. We'll miss you guys, sort of. Mostly Ajax. She was my favorite of those four. I'm gonna miss her a bunch. Yeah. Um but th that's uh that I I just I couldn't rest until we had laid those eternals and deviant to rest in our proper traditional way. Um because yeah. I hate when we when we uh when we slip on tradition. I hate when other things slip on tradition, like that one X-Men movie. I can't remember which one it was, but there was that one X-Men movie that didn't start with the silver door turning. And I'm like, what are you doing, bro? What's, what's going on? Right? So had to be the third one. Had to be the third one. Must have been. Yeah. Either that or Origins, because, you know, they did everything right. Um, I was really hoping I would get a special. Wow, we're on, we're just <laughs> on a fiery path of vengeance right now. Oh, boy. Um, and it might not let up, um, because now we're going to talk about last week's Disney Plus Day, uh, which was. Oh, yeah. That was only four days ago. Feels like longer. 
But four yeah. days ago, Disney Plus kind of showed off what they had in store. Um, and, you know, we surmised beforehand. Uh, you and I talked about it. James and I did a, a Patreon exclusive Rebel Scum episode about it. And we were just kind of talking, you know, what we think we'll see. And both with you and with James, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure this is how you felt, Ryan. But like we both pretty much assumed we weren't getting much new big stuff. Uh, there was a rumor you were talking about where they you something about announcing the cast of Fantastic Four, which would have been nice. But then I I forgot. Like you got me like swept up in the the beauty of that because you're so good at that, and I forgot that that has nothing to do with Disney Plus, and it was probably not fit. So it makes sense that that didn't happen. But uh, were you get it? Did you get what you expected, or less, or more? What did you get? <sighs> I got to I, I got to say I'm kind of I have mixed feelings on it because I think the problem was is I was expecting Disney's Investors Day kind of level of, of event and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was a Disney Plus day, yeah. which I'm okay with. But my problem is is that there was no fan involvement. Like lit- and by that I mean there was no there was no stage with announcements where you see Kevin Feige come out. Literally, there was nothing. And I'm sure on the investor side of things, that may be different. Like they may have had a, a special presentation with Kevin Feige. Mm-hmm. But I I don't know. Like, it's like you gotta look at this from a couple of angles. As an investor, I get it. You're paying you literally are paying for this business. You are paying for this business to do well, so you get more from said payment, you know what I mean? Like you get a return. So yeah, you would want a presentation that's directed at you, right? But, you know, then you look at events like E3, E3 used to be for the industry only, but it became so big and so out of control that they were like, you know what, why aren't we including the fans? And, and, And then they made this big event experience that everyone comes out and celebrates and the whole thing. And then, behind the scenes there's like a little investor thing for that you know what i mean or or industry thing for that um so i think i think overall i think the hype got a little out of control for this event because everyone's like oh my god it's disney plus day and i'm I'm, i was expecting like the investor day where kevin feige stands in front of a green screen and you know walks through gives us a little how you doing very excited to be here we're excited to have kevin feige there and then he goes through all the announcements yeah. Um, this was literally like what's going on with Disney Plus. And and I'm okay with that, but the thing I wasn't okay with was literally I had to wait hand and foot on Twitter feed uh and wait for a refresh every few seconds. Uh and that was kind of brutal. Yeah, the Twitter thing I don't I it's no secret I've said it almost every episode of this podcast. I don't like mm. Twitter. <gasps> Shocker, I don't. Nobody likes what? Twitter. People who say they like Twitter are lying to you. Um, they, I, I agree. That was my biggest takeaway is like, even just one little, you know, Nintendo direct esque video of just somebody in front of a black screen showing you logos would have been better than this. And I don't think it would have cost that much more to do either. Mm. Uh, so it was, it was a strange choice to do it that way. And I think it's because they really didn't have much new to show off. So it's almost like they were just quietly telling you what's coming out. Um, So let's talk about that. They could be saving something for a bigger day. Like they could have Mm. a Disney investor day and then do the big old unfold um, to which is it's roughly around this time. So I don't know. I don't know if Disney plus day eventually has taken over that. And if so, why was it so tame and, and why was it so tame for that experience? But yeah, I think I think one thing that we haven't addressed yet is the content they announced. And there is some stuff to discuss there. And it's some pretty exciting things, I have to say. There are. Uh, I'm going to get the, uh, the, the Instagram page so I can remember everything in the order that it came out. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I feel like the order kind of was an interesting thing too. So the first thing they showed was actually yeah this is the first thing that i have on my feed here which is i think the most interesting thing 
X Men ninety seven. Yes. What's that about? Yes. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my God. So I am super, super stoked. Um, first of all, you also have to think about this. Okay. Oh, do we really? Do we have to think about this for a second? You have to, you do, because does this mean that the animated series is MCU? See, that is, that's the thing, Ryan Joseph Whitehead. That is what I said. <laughs> To to my my buddy David Raff, I'm, I'm butchering his last name David Ratchfalowski, who is a big Marvel head as well. I said the same thing to him that later that night, where he was like mm -hmm. raving about this X Men thing, and I said to him, I don't know how they're going to do this. I have no idea what it's going to look like. I have no idea if this is going to be MCU canon. I have no idea if it's going to bring the rest of the original series into MCU canon, but you had me at Rogue. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. had me at Rogue. That's yep. that's it. Well, at the end of the day. Sugar, that is all I have to say. This has me as excited as a hungry fox in a chicken coop. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know... In terms of how it's going to look, uh, there is a preview. A small, small, small preview. You get to see the logo, yes. But they show what the animation is going to look like because they have the drawing of the characters. So, Oh, shit. So, Where? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I, oh, man. It's uh, in, the, in the Disney Plus uh, Marvel thing, if you watch it. It's 14 minutes long. Eight of those 14 minutes are pure, you know, recap of what you've missed on Disney Plus. Yeah. But, Right at right when it introduces X Men, it shows the X Men standing by the logo, and it's a cleaner look of the original animation. So wow. what's cool about it is, is like I asked my brother, I'm like, man, are they going to like recreate the animation? I, I said that to him before I saw that that full clip, um, and I kind of overlooked it when I first saw it. Like I was just like, oh, how are they going to do it? And then you see it. It's right in front of you. And it, it literally is. Is like, imagine if the cartoon was like HD. Now, the cool thing is, is that now, are they going to bring back like majority of the actors? I think there's only one or two that are uh, unfortunately passed on. But mm -hmm. they, I think most of the original cast could be found. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? I mean, everybody mm -hmm. who's still around, obviously, they're going to sound different. That's just, that's nobody's fault. You, you age, you sound different. Um, yeah. If they do that, it, you know what? There's this. This raises so many questions. I just, I feel like it's something that is so far away. Because if it wasn't so far away, they would have played a little snippet. Animation mm. takes long, so if they didn't have a little snippet now. They won't have a little snippet in, until at least six months. And that's just a little snippet. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm Obviously, you had me at Rogue. Whether or not this is going to be canon is something that I think is on everybody's mind. If all the animated stuff falls under the blurry what-if category, I guess I'm okay with that. But... I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm flummoxed by this. I'm flummoxed that this exists. Yeah. Uh, I I am, I'm mind blown. At the same time, I love it because it just goes to show you that like <laughs> Marvel is respecting the, the history. I mean, like, because could you, yeah. Okay, this is kind of a weird spot to be in because you got to think, you got to think about this. You have like when you think of the X Men here, is that you know, especially in the Marvel Universe period, is you're going go to go instantly to that cartoon. So mm -hmm. what do you do, right? Like, do you do you? Obviously, everyone's expecting this. You know, what are the X Men going to look like in the MCU? So there's that question that needs to be answered. But what I love in the meantime, whether or not we're going to see X Men is like they're just like well let's just continue the show like it's so it's so brilliant it's like it's out of all the outcomes like they could have they could have done an animated series like what if 
and just done the X-Men and mm -hmm. have that be it. But in this particular case, they're just like, the show is great. Like the show is as close as you're going to get to the comics and yet still make it feel fresh. And it's like, let's just continue it. And there's, and, I, and it left off at such a good point too. I mean, yeah. like episode, episode, or sorry, season five kind of got a bit weird because the animation studio was different. Budget mm -hmm. felt kind of different. Um, but there were some quality episodes in it. Uh, Wolverine meets Captain America, uh, the origin story of Mr. Sinister. Uh, and then finally the graduation sh episode where there's something that happens to Xavier, can't remember, but the Shi'ar take him. And that's the last of we see of him. Yeah, so, he's pretty much dead. His body's dead. That they say they say in in as far as Earth knowledge is concerned, he's dead. But yeah. as far as the Shi'ar is concerned, he's not quite dead yet. He and so, Melandra, we know what they're getting up to up there in space. Mm -hmm. oh, he's gonna get little... resurrected. Oh. <laughs> Yep. So, so it's interesting. It's a very interesting concept. I, I think it's probably one of the smartest moves. Um, I just, my question is, I, it, I, it's kind of like, I don't even care if it is or not. Cause like, is it MCU? But at the same time, I don't care. Cause like, I'm just happy the show's back. You know what I mean? Like, just cause I grew up with the show. Exactly. And I think the best bet, at least how I feel is if it's not MCU canon. If it is exactly what you said, they're just, mm -hmm. you know, hey, we have some uh, some ideas. Let's continue this show that is pretty much beloved across the board. Uh, and that way you kind of get to have your mutant cake and eat it too. You get this cartoon, but you're also getting X-Men in the MCU. It's just still a mystery of how and when they're going to show up. Uh, but I've always been yeah. of the mind, and I think you agree, that I've always been in the mind because I love what MCU does with the colorful costumes is that when they do show up in the MCU, they should look like this cartoon. I'm talking Cyclops with blue and yellow. I'm talking Wolverine with blue and yellow. I'm talking Storm with a white cape, uh, like all the goodness that you love to see. Um, so that's, you know, if that exists, that it makes me feel like we're that much closer to getting those live action X-Men because now it's almost like they'd be embarrassed to put out anything that looks less good because that's standing right next to it on Disney plus. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. I don't know. I personally, me, I don't know if this is a, a move in order to appease the fans to say, look, we're going to give you the X-Men you want. It's going to be in the animated show. And then in the MCU expect some big differences. Ooh. I expect not to have certain characters, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, um, I I would be wondering if we'll see, you know, man, I don't even know where to begin. I'm wondering if we'll if we'll even see Gambit, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like I don't know. Well, maybe you, you're right. That is 100% a possibility. But mm -hmm. if I can put on my wishful thinking hat for a second, yeah. Um, the core team from that cartoon. Yes really what and again i know nothing about the comics really so i'm just approaching it from Ooh. yeah i'm approaching it from literally everything else everything that's not the comics but the core team from that cartoon has never been that core team again we've never seen that team again the movies had a whole new team the movie reboots rebooted with a whole new team so what if feige decided for his x-men movie his core team is going to be that cartoon. So this is a way to get audiences used to that team again. This is a way of getting them used to the idea of, guys, Kitty Pride, whatever. We all know you're here to see Jubilee. We all know she's your audience proxy. So let's remind people of that so it's not jarring when she shows up in a movie and everybody's like, who's this? For the past 20 years, all I've known is a non-Southern rogue and somebody named Kitty Pride. What, what's this? Who's this girl with the banana raincoat? And then they just start you know, getting acclimatized to that. Well, in, in the comics, I think, I think Jubilee was a, not like a main member until a little bit later on. Um, not in the first early run. I actually, Psylocke was, was a more prominent member of the X-Men at that time in, in the Jim Lee run of the nineties that everyone kind of gravitates to. So, 
Uh, yeah, I, oof, I don't know, man. But I definitely think we're going to get probably a different, they're very different X Men in the in the uh, in the movie. Like I like I'd be a, I'd be surprised if we get a, at least five of the same members. Oof. I because like I'm just thinking out loud. Like, mm. and I, like, don't get me wrong. I'm tr- I'm actually trying to outsmart the Feige radar, which is like impossible to do. But it makes sense to me. Like, it just like why like in terms of this move if you take a step back and really think about how they've been doing the MCU everything that happens plays out a certain way and it's not it's never exactly a direct translation from the comics like you can't like civil war is a perfect example we yeah. knew the we knew the battle of iron man and cap is going to happen but on what scale and and that was the thing scale was much smaller and on top of that, the events leading up to it weren't even remotely close to what they were in the comics. You know, like there was no reality show of the Young Avengers, no, you know, bus of kids blowing up, uh, you know, Mutant Registration Act. There wasn't that either. And now we have Sokovia Accords uh, and this this uh, this kid, innocent, uh, this innocent civilian dies during this battle in Sokovia. So it's. Again, small things here and there, but overall, it doesn't translate directly. It's very, very different. I was hoping that it was going to be about like a, a fight about recipes. Like Captain America has a, a yeah. cake recipe and mm-hmm. Tony Stark is like, no, no, no. You have to put five tablespoons of vanilla extract. And he's like, no, it's three. Civil War. That's what I was hoping for. So I was really yeah. disappointed. I actually boycotted the movie for the first four months. <laughs> yeah. I got four signatures on my boycott. Yeah. So that that's great. that's kind of like my summary thought on X Men the animated series. Is like I'm very excited for it. Do I care that it's going to be MCU? No. Would I like it to be? Yes. Uh, but good luck trying to figure out how that's going to happen. And I, but personally, me, I think this is a nice way to say we know you love the cartoon. We're going to continue it. And in the in the meantime, know that potentially the X Men you will see on screen will not be anything close to the X Men that you've seen from the cartoon. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Uh, but it's so nice to have them back, and even just that announcement is so colorful. That bright yellow—they don't make yellow oh. like that anymore. It's, I'm looking at the logo right now. It's just like there, nothing else yeah. looks like that. That is just a gem. So mm-hmm. that's X Men '97. And then the next thing that they dropped um, was the Moon Knight logo. Just to remind us, Moon Knight is coming out. Um, now, this this is a pattern. Oh, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you not see whoa. the trailer? Oh, I saw the trailer. I saw the trailer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For a second there, I was like, hold on a second. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I sent it to you. <laughs> it. It's this is a pattern that happened on this Disney Plus day that I I think needs to be addressed just to get out of the way is absolutely nothing has a release date. Nothing even yes. has a release month. Like they nothing. all have a release year, but they don't have the yeah. month for sure. Yeah. Um actually I don't even know if some of them uh have years. I think some of them just say coming soon. Like Moon Knight just says coming soon uh yeah it looks like it's yeah uh let me i'm double checking here i'm double checking the only thing that has even a vague idea is miss marvel uh she hulk said 2022 i think i'm pretty sure okay hold on hold on moon knight i'm I'm looking on instagram yeah Yeah. Yeah. i'm looking at i'm looking at the source which is uh which is twitter plus No, uh, She-Hulk original series streaming soon as well. Yeah, yeah, just soon. Okay, but so, I, you know, before we fully close the chapter on X Men, I am going to send you something real quick, uh, and you know, you can just there you go, booyah! Didn't even see it. I sent it to you, and you can then see what the animation is going to look like. Oh boy! Okay, let's see here. Whoa! Okay, there they are. Look at them. Look at them all. You just sent me all the X-Men. There's Beast looking the way Beast should. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's Jean Grey with that. To this day, I couldn't even tell you what color Jean Grey's pants are. I'm going to say peach. 
She, <laughs> you know, they they look almost like she's nude. They're like almost the same color as your skin. There's Jubilee. There's my girl Rogue. Yep. Damn oh it. boy. Yeah. Oh, that's it. that's uh, that's what it's all about right there. Beautiful. Yeah. So okay. So now we can close it and let's go to Moon Knight. Let's go to Moon Knight. Um, doesn't have a release date. All right. Fine. Now we've got a little, not even really a trailer, but like a scene and a half, I guess you could call it, of Moon Knight. Seeing him in action for the first time, seeing him in costume for the first time, looking good. Very nice costume. I Now, this is what I'm talking about. You don't see what the suit fully looks like. You see mm-hmm. a very Silhouette. small... Yeah, you see a very small silhouette in, in one of the night shots as he's jumping from like roof to roof kind of thing. And you also see his cape. But uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, right here, guys. You see uh-huh. you see only see only glimpses of them, but you don't see the full outfit. And that, in my mind, is how you tease a hero because now you're. It's always like you're trying to just like, oh, if the camera could just just turn a little bit, then we'll see it. But or zoom in, but you're not going to see it. And I think that's great because you're going to see it, and it's going to look fantastic in the actual show. I thought that the way you tease a hero. It's like, you're like, hey, hero, you suck. <laughs> and then you're like, oh. <laughs> um, he's the, I love that jumping shot. That's such a cool, like, 90s looking. It, it reminds me of, like, the opening credits of Ninja Turtles. There's like that same shot, right? Where they jump from rooftop and you just see them. Like, like, yeah, it just. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks very nice. Uh, you're not excited for this show, right? This is probably one you're going to skip. <laughs> Uh, first of all, yeah, no, I, it's a, I mean, if I had a sarcastic detector to explode right there, um, but, um, honestly, yes, very excited, but to be fair, as a fan, I only discovered Moon Knight, like the awesomeness of Moon Knight recently. Like, um, I've heard of Moon Knight. I've seen him in the video games and I, I, I heard he's interesting. And then I, you know, once they announced that they're doing a Moon Knight show and I'm talking like way way back like we're talking i think it was like the first disney oh it was d20 the first d23 that marvel attended they were july like, oh, yeah, 2019 by the way, yeah they're like by the way we're doing moon Knight, and then i was like okay if if feige wants moon Knight, this needs some more attention and yeah. apparently this guy has had cult status for a super long time um he came out in the 80s and we we did the marvel 92 trading card thing and he's in there as well uh, and this character is really cool. It has a really cool history and is kind of an interesting concept. Very far out there, though. I mean, um, you know, we're seeing a character who suffers from multiple personality disorder, but you don't know if he gets that from Khonshu, the moon god. And, and what's weird about it is, and what I love, and I wish they did this more with Thor, um, is like you don't know if he's if he actually is powered by the moon. Like you don't know if this is true. To him, he could be just having episodes and just being like again, he could just be schizophrenic in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, play that narrative. But and again, you see him like you see him full of superhero mode doing his thing, and you can't. There are some pieces of evidence that obviously lead you to the idea that yes, he is powered by the god and all this stuff. But other people don't know that. But you, the reader, you know, constantly jump the lines of like, oh, yeah, clearly he's powered by this god. But is he, though? Because the characters don't see him that way. And it's it's a fun dance around back and forth. Uh, very excited for the show, though. I love Oscar Isaac. <clears throat> I think he finally got the Marvel role that truly will let him be this great character and let him really just play up, like, all this cool stuff. What I like about it, and, you know, Isabel and I debated a little bit, is that his voice in the trailer when he's doing the different voices or is it multiple characters doing different different things? And I actually think it's his voice. I think he's actually changing his voice through the, the different uh, parts of the trailer. That would be really cool. If he's pulling a James McAvoy and Split, he could have a lot oh, of fun yeah. with that. And that's a talented yeah. man uh, and a beautiful man. You don't hide a man like that behind apocalypse makeup. No. Uh, so I'm glad... He's here. Is Moon Knight, uh, does he have like a main villain that he fights with a lot that we'll probably see here? Yeah, he does. He kind of has like an off off version of Moon Knight, like most Marvel heroes do. Like they have an, an evil version. I love it. 
Yeah, it's is I think his name is uh, Midnight, uh, and he's like an anti Moon Knight. Um, uh, but he is going to be played by Ethan Hawke. I think is going to be the villain. Whoa, okay. Mm-hmm. This is sounding mm-hmm. great. Yeah, the Moon Knight is just it's a solid show that we have been hearing about for two and a half years, and just bring it on. But but I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there and say that. There is a lot of rumors that we're getting the Midnight Suns, which is like the supernatural side of Marvel. Um, that that teaser came from spoiler warning if you haven't seen it yet. Eternals uh, with Blade appearing in the end credit sequence with uh, the Black Knight. So we actually may get all of them coming together. Uh, interesting enough, though, that hasn't been talked about is that Echo. Uh, is a uh, uh, villain turned anti-hero kind of character and her first appearance is going to be in Hawkeye. Um, but she uh, actually does have some hangouts with Moon Knight. Actually, she appeared, she appears and saves Moon Knight at some points during the story uh, when there's like a, a, a kind of like a kingpin like character going after him and he he ends up uh, he ends up being Moon Knight ends up being saved by Echo so that's going to get interesting so we may see a tie in there some crossovers okay and let's just get one thing straight there there's no kingpin like characters you either have kingpin or you don't <laughs> do or do but, not there is no try mm-hmm. but it's true but she's also a big she also plays a big role in Secret Invasion so that's going to be an interesting one as well Echo plays a big role Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about her. Yeah, we'll get to her. She's coming. All right. Next is She Hulk. Now, this is this is for me. This is my Moon Knight. Okay. Oh yeah. This is, I don't have a She Hulk shirt, um, but we got to get you. I, I um, first thing I'll get this out of the way, and this is just me being me. But this new logo is garbage i, I thought like it. it was really cool i think, I it's think it is so bland it looks like a netflix show it looks like they're they're trying to be Ooh. like we're we're adult we don't care about fun um yeah no i don't like <gasps> it at all. yeah the 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 old logo they showed us at d23 2019 was bright and colorful it looked like a 90s cartoon logo it was everything I could have wanted. It got me so excited. I'm still excited, but that logo, boy, that is some. That's a somebody was in a bad mood when they got told to make that new She-Hulk logo. Uh, I'm just glad that the little scene we got afterwards showed us we got to see Jennifer, and more importantly, we got Tatiana. to see a little, a little bit of She-Hulk, and she's in the purple tracksuit, and it was awesome. She looks exactly like how I wanted, and mm. I'm I'm a happy man. I'm a happy green man. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny. It's funny because that trailer was really good. Uh, it was really really good. Um, it both both were both Moon Knight and She Hulk were. And what what I'm a little disappointed is what I'm a little disappointed in is that uh, we only got like a minute. We only got a minute <laughs> worth of footage, which is nothing. That's nothing. Okay. And you blitz through it. Uh, but yes, we could see Tatiana Mislani be uh, Jennifer Walters. Um, and honestly, there's a couple of interesting questions here. First of all, when we see uh, our boy Bruce, uh, he was Bruce mode during the end credits of Shang-Chi. Yes. Then we see in this trailer that he's Professor Hulk mode. Mm-hmm. So something is going on there. Something's there's there's You're, a story there. Apparently, it will be explained. We're told it will be explained. I think it's going to happen in She Hulk. It's going to happen in She Hulk. He's going to explain what happened to him. I but, think so. And Jennifer mm-hmm. is uh, Jennifer has always been more in control of it. I think. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think she can kind of. I mean, she's never, as far as I've seen, she's never a rage monster. You know, she's still intelligent when she's She Hulk. But somebody pointed out today that in Shang-Chi, Bruce has like a thing on his wrist with a light on it. And apparently yeah. that might be what he's using to control his transformation, like to go back and forth. He might he might have some kind of tech. Yeah. 
Okay, that'd be pretty cool. I'll buy it. I'll buy that. Mm -hmm. Literally for myself, so I can change back and forth to this. Oh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I, th I think it, again, it was solid trailer. What I like is like in the end, it's a, like the the talk track is like a commercial for her being a lawyer, which I thought is really cool. Yeah. Um, I think I don't know, man. The way evidence is pointing, I think we might you might get your kingpin. I think you're gonna get him. If I get kingpin and she hulk in the same show. Uh, that's, you know, I'll take back everything I said about the logo. <laughs> all, all these shows involve the streets, uh, and they're all mm. street level heroes and all of them have crossed paths with Kingpin at some point or another. Yes. So it's only a matter of time. And I'm oh, saving boy. one really juicy detail about Echo later on. So I'm going to oh. hold my tongue on that. This but yeah, She-Hulk very exciting uh it says streaming soon so that could either mean within the next six months it could come out i hope so i mean there was a there was a time in 1992 when my mom walked into a harvey's and asked them if they were going to be getting a church's chicken and they told her soon and she's still waiting for that church's chicken so i wouldn't uh i don't put a lot of stock in the word soon so uh We'll Maybe see not. what happens. Yeah. Maybe not, but here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. We have seen footage. So that yeah. means that they're close to they're close to done. And on top of that, we have a big gap of time between Spider-Man and the next Marvel film. Like yes. a huge gap of time. And that yes. gap of time can easily be filled by three shows, which they did with uh Loki, sorry, WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and Loki pretty much back to back. You're absolutely right. And in, before this day, before these announcements, I was willing to bet money that one of those shows would be Miss Marvel mm -hmm. uh, because that was pretty much almost ready. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, that being the next one, we can jump into that one now. That is now coming out in the summer, a full six months after it was initially supposed to drop. It's got a little bit of a new logo. Uh, I love this logo. I've loved this logo since day one. This Miss Marvel logo is so yeah. beautiful. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about with Miss Marvel, um, it's not even really a worry. It's because I, I don't know how much of it they've already finished. But when we saw the footage of Miss Marvel the other day, it struck me. I was like, God, this girl is really young. Like she's a child. And I'm like, they better hurry because she's not going to be a child for long. So like what, I don't know what they're waiting for. I mean, this is a two year old announcement and then a show that was supposed to come out right around now-ish. And now it's almost a whole other year away. It's like, what, what are they, what's going on with this show? What's happening, Ryan? What, did you mess something up on Miss Marvel? What did you do? <laughs> um, I honestly, Miss Marvel is kind of a tricky one because it sounds like they're trying to align it with Captain Marvel's sequel, which is the Marvels, which mm. if you're going to delay it that long, two things, one of two things happen. One, you're changing the story a little bit and reshooting some scenes to change the narrative to better fit what's going to go on in the Marvels. Because if I'm not mistaken, this comes out, I think, before the Marvels. So I hope so. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like about 90% confident that it is. So that's the first thing. So I'm pretty sure there's been some story changes and they're not done filming yet. Um, because, and the other thing is, is like, I'm sure that as they're coming out with these ideas, um, they may pivot. Like they may, like apparently, um, what movie was it that did that? Uh, there was a movie with X-Men, what X-Men was doing and what, uh, something like WandaVision or something like that. But like the two of the endings were so similar that they're like, okay, no, we got to, we got to change it. And and X Men changed it, and then and oh, then I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. What is, it was um, it's not one division. It was the uh, the first class. Mm -hmm. uh, first class was coming out around the same no, it was time. Dark as Phoenix. Inception. It was Dark Phoenix. I'm 100 percent sure it was Dark Phoenix. Is it Dark Phoenix? Yeah. Because I know uh, maybe Dark Phoenix did the same thing then, but I know because first class came out in 2010. Yeah, it came, it came out just months after Inception. And first class also had a scene where Xavier was fighting Emma Frost and they were doing like a psychic fight in a hallway. Yeah. 
and the hallway was turning and they were flailing oh. around. And then Inception came out and they're like, oh shit, it's going to look like we copied them because it, was, it yeah. was apparently like beat for beat. So they pulled that whole fight. And that's why Emma Frost kind of disappears in that movie. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember what it is, but I remember there was like a, a pivot and it was like they were too similar. Um, so yeah, so that's my logic and reasoning why the delay. The other delay I think that happened is that the effects for the special effects for Miss Marvel, they actually admitted that um, it's not going to be like in the comics where her skin stretches. Like she actually has powers similar to Mr. Fantastic. Like she can, but in like, no, essentially their, their powers are very similar, like almost like identical. Um, but now what I'm hearing is they're kind of changing it now to uh, effects similar to Green Lantern. Oh, so she's going to have light coming out of her? She's going to shoot it. light? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I like this. Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very cool. Um, I would say for those who don't know Miss Marvel, she actually is a really interesting character. And if you want to see what good storytelling is or what like what good storytelling for her looks like is you can actually play the Avengers Marvel's Avengers game because it, if you play the story, her story, her story is the narrative. Um, and she kind of becomes the the Coulson of Avengers mm -hmm. later on, like, you know. Mm -hmm. In the game, Avengers are like a well-celebrated team at this point. They're very popular, and they're going to unveil some big thing at the event. Something horribly goes wrong. They all disassemble the Avengers. They all go their own ways, and you know Bruce goes up on trial and says, you know, Avengers are a big risk to society. Blah 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 blah. And she, because of her like youthful enthusiasm toward heroism and like what it means to be a superhero, she actually ends up bringing them all back together. So there's some really good storytelling there. And um, I would, I hope to see it in the show personally. Oh, well, here's hoping. I really like this Green Lantern route. That, uh, that yeah. sounds fun. <laughs> I mean, that's, yes. uh, that's the magic word. All you got to say to me is Green Lantern and I'm, I'm in. So, mm -hmm. all right, Miss mm -hmm. Marvel. And I mean, you know, bad things are bad forever, but delayed things are only delayed until they come out. So if, if this delay is just to help it tie in more or change things up for the better delay away. Exactly. Um, Cause it can only get better from there. Beautiful. All right, Miss Marvel, we'll see you in six months. Uh, and then we move on to the next thing, uh, yeah. which we all knew was coming, but this just kind of clarifies it. What if season two, which is also just coming soon. Uh, and I don't like, I, I can't imagine that this is coming soon. Because I don't think they greenlit the, the like a season two until after season one got a good reception. That takes mm -hmm. a long time to animate stuff. So I don't think this is going to be out anytime soon at all. Yes and no. I mean, if the animation's been established, then it's not hard to kind of just like create new characters based on that. Um, I think it, I don't think it will take as much time as required. Uh, am I excited for this? I mean, yeah, more Marvel stuff is great, but overall, what if didn't overall impress me or get me super excited? Uh, I feel kind of the same way with what if season two. Am I happy that I'm going to get more Watu and uh, uh, more more Jeffrey? I believe his name is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hella stoked. Uh, what I what I want from the show that's going to blow my mind is give me more appearances. If this is what if then stop giving me things that I've seen already with the twist because that's what the MCU is. It's things I've seen already with the twist and give me new characters. Give me stuff I have not seen. You have Oscar Isaac. You might as well do Spider-Man 2099 and what if it's there, uh, it's you know? So I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, I'm still going to see it. Uh, but to to make me be like, oh, I can't wait for the next week to see what it is. You got to do something pretty big on the first episode in order for that to happen. Yeah, I think that their best bet with this show would be to, let's say it comes out next Christmas, yeah. a year from now. 
make the show about the stuff that happens in Spider-Man and the stuff that happens in Multiverse of Madness are affecting Uatu. And that's what this season is about. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like, let's look at some more worlds. It's sure, we'll look at some more worlds, but I'm doing it because some bad stuff happened in these last two movies and I'm still cleaning up that mess. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it's nice that it's coming back. Cool. Um, but yeah, we're not holding our breath for it. Uh, at least not as much as we're holding our breath for Echo, which is next. All right, so Echo is a thing. This was pretty much everything but confirmed until this came out. They were talking about mm -hmm. it for a long time. Um, the logo is interesting because it just looks like a field with a, a horizon and a sunrise. I know nothing about Echo except that she is a person who's showing up in Hawkeye. So I'll defer this to you, buddy. What's the deal here? <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so you're ready for this juicy detail? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Echo is the adopted daughter of the Kingpin. No, shut up. <gasps> what? Yep. yep, better believe it. <laughs> what about Richard? His son Richard is like... What? So he's like, I, my son left. I'm gonna adopt this this kid and bring her up the way I yeah, want her. I don't know if we'll get Richard. I don't think we will personally. I think actually they're just gonna jump straight ahead to this this character. That makes um, sense because yeah, Vanessa mm -hmm. and he didn't really conceive any children. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. So why does he adopt this child? Kingpin never does anything without you know some kind of sinister reason. What does he? Uh, I don't know too much about that story other than just like the, the obvious headline here. Um, let me just see if I can quickly pull up a detail here. Uh, uh, oh, um, okay. So essentially, yeah, he wanted, uh, he basically wanted to raise someone to, to properly like take over his, his empire at some point. Um, and, he, uh, and he also uh, makes her go after Daredevil. And they have a lot of, you know. So she becomes like kind of like a direct villain to Daredevil for a bit there. But yeah, essentially she was supposed to like inherit the empire of, of Kingpin at some point. I could be horribly Damn. wrong, but that's my understanding of it. And does she have powers? Uh, she actually, no. She's like kind of like a very skilled warrior um uh yeah like she she's an olympic level athlete mm. um, a highly skilled acrobat gifted ballerina photograph photographic reflexes similar to a certain Ooh. master of tasks um which will be yeah, so she's she's sounding very black widow-esque yeah yeah and she's also deaf oh okay that's that's a big uh burying the lead there okay so she's also deaf um that's interesting. So you pit her against Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So is that why people are so certain that they're bringing back Daredevil? Is because this girl is legit now? Like she's legitimately part mm -hmm. of MCU? Because uh, it feels like they go, they're meant to go hand in hand. Like it feels like Fisk adopted her as an answer to Daredevil. A little bit. Uh, actually, sorry. I do I do have like the, the little snippet here. So um to do my ascent by the kingpin to prove matt murdoch's weakness telling her that matt believes fisk is a bad person and that she'd only want to prove him wrong as maya believes fisk uh it would not appear she would be a lie so uh they fall in love uh maya and matt murdoch uh she later takes on the echo guys to hunt down daredevil because she doesn't know the two are the same people um and in revenge, uh, Maya confronts and shoots Fisk, uh, blinding Fisk, starting a chain of events that would lead to the eventual downfall. Kingpin later partially recovers eyesight through surgery. Um, realizing the horror of the actions of the lives which she has grown up, Maya flees to the United States to do some soul searching. When she comes back, she's reuniting with Murdoch, only to find out Murdoch is now with a, uh, a blind woman. Kingpin is still alive, leaving Matt. Maya visits the Kingpin in prison, who... Uh, who tells her that she doesn't get blamed for what she did. 
Despite all that happened, Kingpin loves her like a daughter. Unsatisfied and still needing peace, Maya turns to uh, her chief, uh, her uh, father's old friend, noted for wisdom. The chief sends Maya on a vision quest to calm her soul. On her quest, she meets and befriends Wolverine, who helps her recover, passes on knowledge of Japanese culture uh, and Japanese organized crime. Soon enough, Maya, Maya makes peace and back in doing her performance art. So he hires her as an assassin and he starts to you know, look at her like a daughter and then thus she becomes the adopted daughter of the kingpin. I can't believe I've never heard of this girl until like two weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. And the kingpin that you just described. Yes. Sounds like D'Onofrio's kingpin. Right? It could fit. It, I think yeah. it fits. It's, but again, direct translation, right? Like we don't know if it's going to flip like that, but you're right. I definitely think by the evidence we're seeing here, it's, I don't think, I, if I were a betting man, I would put money that D'Onofrio is returning. Wow. I mean, <laughs> yes, please. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's Echo coming soon, question mark. I, um, I really, who's to say when it'll hit? We still don't have Hawkeye. So, yeah. But that's cool. That's great to know. I am now a billion times more excited for echo than I was before. I literally had no idea what her deal was. Now I know her deal and I want to see her whole deal. Very nice. Okay. What was next? Okay. Next is an interesting one. Next is Spider-Man freshman year. Another yeah. animated original series. So, uh, again, the animation looks pretty interesting for this one as well. Um, uh, let me just quickly show you here. Uh, oh, they showed the animation for this too, huh? Uh, still, like literally less than two seconds. Um, but yes, I sent you the picture. Um, and again, this actually the interesting thing about this story is this is the origin story of Spider-Man of and but of Tom Holland Spider-Man in the MCU. Right. Yeah. This picture. Okay. Yeah. He. It looks like the '60s comic. Yeah. Like it looks like the first sort of amazing fantasy issues. Um, yeah, if it's Tom Holland's origin, I got to be honest, who cares? Like we know. I love he's my favorite Spider-Man, but like who cares? We don't need it. We want to no. keep looking ahead. We know, the mm -hmm. we know the story so well that leaving it to the, the imagination of the viewers is perfect. Just keep moving forward. Keep going. And I mean, back. I, I just mentioned this on uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if you watch uh, the HBO show Succession. No. Um, it's a great show. It's fantastic. It's about a, a company that's basically Fox without saying it's Fox. And they're super evil. And it's just about how the company is an absolute shit show. And the family who runs it are just complete morons. Um, but the company has existed for decades by the time we start the show in the modern era, it's like been around for a long time. And I was bringing this up just yesterday on my YouTube channel, because I was saying, you know, it would be really interesting to see how this company started, uh, mm -hmm. like make it a period piece. It would be like set in the seventies, whatever. But at the same time, I hate that that is such a trend because, you know, everybody jumps on that like, oh, you loved Sons of Anarchy? Well, here's the prequel show to Sons of Anarchy. But what these people don't understand, and when I say these people, I mean the people who greenlight these prequels all the time, is that the writers chose that story, that first story that you fell in love with, they chose that because it's the most interesting story in this world. Yeah. If there was a more interesting story, they would have told that first. Mm -hmm. So the same goes here. John Watts and whoever wrote Homecoming, they chose that because it's more interesting to jump into that world than to be like, hey, let's see the spider bite him again. And then Flash can be a bully and he can jump over a car. Uncle Ben. Like, we know. We get it. So, and I mean, whoever Peter slash Spider-Man fights in his freshman year, is not going to be as interesting as the vulture yeah. or Mysterio. It's just 100%. not. So mm. 
I mean, cool. You're making another Spider-Man cartoon. I don't know when the last time was that one of those came out, but make it mm-hmm. something else. We don't need this. Exactly. There's not much else that needs to be said there. And and jumping on to I Am Groot, I don't know what else to say other than we're just going to see lots and lots of Groot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is also animated. I have no idea what they're going for with this. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is going to be something really small like those Olaf things it's like four minutes of like Groot just Groot being weird I guarantee you we're gonna get the same references we're gonna get we're gonna get more of Groot not being caught by Drax like moving around doing something goofy he just kind of freezes Mm. we're gonna see lots of that um we're gonna see Groot being uh annoying to Quill uh we're gonna see uh Rocket and Groot being best friends and uh and yeah i mean i don't know what else to say there and then adventures 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 um but honestly there's not much to say about that yeah it's it's still i still feel the same way about it as i did when they announced it in 2019 just like okay Mm -hmm. your group cool um iron heart gets a brand new logo iron heart's next uh i like i dig this new logo the old one looked like iron man which i thought was cool uh but i dig this too i dig the heart i like the look of it um now interestingly enough when they did the d23 two years ago i tend to lump it together in my head even though they're probably very different stories but they announced iron heart and armor wars Mm -hmm. which this week armor wars was nowhere to be seen has that been quietly canceled? What do you think is going on there? No. Um, Armor Wars is still very much happening. It's Good. with Don Cheadle. Um, Don Cheadle is coming back as War Machine and for Armor Wars. Uh, and all you need to know for Ironheart as of right now um, is she becomes essentially the new Iron Man. Uh, and what's really cool about it is it's kind of a passing of the torch character done in a really good way uh in a battle in in a major battle a piece of iron man's armor falls from the sky and lands in like inler trash can essentially and she's able to build her own iron man suit from that Ooh, neat yeah so she's a really cool character um if you want to see some good cartoon stuff there's some reference uh, she's been in the cartoon uh it's newer spider-man cartoons ultimate spider-man a few few times so she's definitely worth checking out um armor wars the original story was about the creation of war machine so i'm assuming that this one is going to be about more about um james rhodes as a person and more about him and, and his adventures as being war machine good because I, mean, I wanted something more of the military him. i bet you i bet you actually armor wars this is my money is that in Iron Man 2, they talked about different countries making their own Iron Men. That's going to happen. And then Boom. and then he's going to go take them all out. Boom. We might even actually see some Crimson Dynamo action. I think we will. I definitely think we will. Or what's his name? Titanium Man. He was Russian too, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, so good. Ironheart still looks great. Armor Wars still sounds great. And hopefully, uh, if rumors are to be believed, I remember hearing one of them Brings back Justin Hammer. So, yes, please. Um, And then we go on to what I think was the most pleasant surprise, which was Agatha House of Harkness. Yes. Uh, I'm hearing... The only thing I can really say about this, because Agatha's a big character. I mean, she's been with the Fantastic Four quite a bit. When WandaVision was coming out, we knew we had a feeling it was going to be Agatha. Uh, We were thinking maybe some Fantastic Four tie-in. And I think there was, personally. I think there was... Uh, the episode where they talk about the rocket ship. I have a feeling that's going to be Fantastic Four's rocket ship. Pretty, mm. pretty sure uh, Reed Richards is going to convince Ben they're going to go steal it and take it into space. Cosmic rays, and then you know the rest of the story. Um, so yeah, uh, all I'm hearing though, from kind of like a conversation standpoint, is it could be a spin on House House of M, which was a big comic book for Marvel. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why kind of like the play on words, house of Harkness. I think that's going to be interesting. Right. Okay. Um, interesting. I never even thought of it going that route. I was picturing just from that 
title, I was picturing like a a series that was entirely set in like Puritan New England. Mm-hmm. And we get the story of Harkness. But yours sounds more interesting because again, who cares about an origin? We know she's a witch. We saw her get hanged. Move forward. So uh yeah, I'm I I love this logo too. It's so purple, like her. Like it's yeah. it's everything I want. It's great. Um coming soon. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows when? <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Next, our favorite, Marvel Zombies. Oh god. You know what though? The only thing I will say about this, the only thing, the only thing I'm going to say about this is uh-huh. I'm glad MCU is at a point where they can just have fun and do kind of stories like this. That's cool, fun enough for me. God, I just I'm so sick of zombies. Just oh god. Mhm. Um the ending of the what if episode, sure. It left it open even though we can assume zombie Thanos is going to kill everybody. Yeah. But it left it open, so if you want to explore that, have fun. Uh, I like that they use the actual Marvel Zombies logo, which is kind of a fun logo. So go for it. Just uh, keep it out of my way as I drive down MCU Highway. Just put it off to the side. Have an exit that mm-hmm. leads to it. Make it like a, a, a motel that's just on the off-ramp that you can go stay at. You know I probably I mean? will watch it, but begrudgingly. Like, I will, <laughs> yeah, like you'll just uh, sit there with your arms folded, like mm. yeah, just like let's get through this, like because yeah. again, I can't say no, but like uh, I just don't want to watch it. Yeah, it's not for me. Mm. Uh, the also, O looks also, like the. Sorry, go sorry. Ahead. No, no. I was I'm just gonna say the O looks like the Dreamcast logo, so that's something. <laughs> Uh, I got to say, though, uh, there was also the uh, reminder that uh, they're still working on Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. All I'm asking, all I'm asking is that it plays out like the Star Wars holiday special. And it's a huge, huge parody of that. And I'd be more than happy with that. Including a scene where Drax is hooked up to a virtual reality porn. Yeah, something something ridiculous like that. Please, please just give me that. But the this last virtual one, woman is saying sexual <laughs> things to me. I'm aroused. I'm aroused. Uh, the Fill last the one, room. though, definitely the secret invasion. Yes. yes. Shiny new more. green logo. Yes, Give please. Me I we get to see a quick glimpse of Nick Fury with no eye patch and lots of beard. Um, yeah. But the cast is really shaping up for this. So. Um, we have uh, Amelia Clark. She's making an uh, she's making an appearance in that. We don't know who she's going to be, but there's been some interesting cast members for this for this uh, for the series. So I think it's going to be really really good. I think so too. I'm looking forward to this. I hope it comes out at a point after the Marvels, because mm-hmm. I feel like the scrolls have stopped being relevant. Like, yes, we, we've got bigger fish to fry right now. So I hope the Marvels reminds us about the scrolls so that we get more excited for this. Yeah. Um, when I watched the trailer that they put out, I only watched it once and it went by very fast. I saw someone and I don't know if it was Amelia Clark, but there was it looked like a woman getting out of a limo in like a silver dress at like a red carpet Ooh. looking thing. Was yeah. that her? Because you don't see a face. I don't even know if that was for Secret Invasion, but it was just it came. I thought it, I thought it could have been She Hulk, but I, I you're Ooh. right. You're right. Could be uh could be a scroll. Amelia. I mean, l- let's be real. How likely is it Amelia is playing Spider Woman? <sighs> That's a oh man. I don't know. That's slim. I I think it's a slim choice because. Really? She's not she's not the ideal person I would pick for that character. I mean, I could be terribly wrong and sure, give me give me Amelia Clark as Spider-Woman cuz that would be awesome. But I I see her as like a Princess Veronki kind of character cuz it just I mean, not to typecast her, but it does feel like it would be a good character because like uh Daenerys, um that character was promised something. And that the character is fulfilling said promise. 
Mm. Uh, even if it means, you know, doing bad things to other people. Wow. Getting to see her play a villain would be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, even though she was kind of a villain as Damaris, depending on what season you're talking about. Uh, I can get on board with that. Yeah. And hey, if they, yeah. they want to stick her in a beautiful silver gown, I can get on board with that too. There's mm-hmm. very little Amelia Clark that I will not get on board with. So exactly. I'm excited for this. I hope we get to see Maria Hill again too. Bring her back. Um, I'm sure we will. Ta- I'm sure we, she's, you know, what else is she going to be doing in the MCU? She's helping out Nick. Uh, Talos is probably around there somewhere. Mm-hmm. So this is looking I, good. I think the, the other thing I want to talk about, it was a big announcement that was made uh, that wasn't in, in the Disney plus day, but I do want to talk about it real quick is Ooh. the announcement that Adam Warlock has been cast. Yes, he has. And mm-hmm. Mr. Will Poulter. Yes. The Poltergeist himself is going to be playing Adam Warlock. Uh, I like it. I like it. It's neat. I think I think it's just a really good casting. Um, if you want to see a really good Adam Warlock, there's two references you can go to. Uh, one is uh, the amazing show that I eventually convinced Fantasia to watch. There's a wicked episode with Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and you get a really good representation of Adam Warlock in that one. Um, and also, if you're looking for another good Adam Warlock uh, representation, is you need to go play the Guardians of the Galaxy game uh, as you do run into Adam Warlock in that. And he actually has quite a big role in it, and he's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun to watch. Spoilers! Uh, if you if you wanted to play it by this point, you would have found out. <laughs> you would have, and and the major story arc kind of gives it away. So, oh, okay, yes, that's spoilers, fair. I guess. Uh yeah, this is uh this is groovy. This is a groovy bit of casting. Will Poulter is one of those names that I like seeing in casts, you know, for big mm-hmm. stuff like this and for Star Wars too. You know, like a name that I have heard once. And what I've seen, I've liked, but it's just a small little thing. And now I want to see what he can do. It's exactly. the same with John Boyega. John Boyega blew me away with Attack the Block. And I'm like, great, that's a movie like 40 people have seen. I hope this kid gets more work. Boom, he's Finn. Yes. <laughs> like. So, uh, yeah, Will Poulter, Adam Warlock. Sounds good. He's been in that cocoon for going on six years now. So it's going to do something. Technically, he's been in it more if you want to count the uh, Thor Dark World. Thor Dark World? Mm -hmm. What happened in Thor Dark World? In the end credits, they passed by a giant cocoon-looking thing, and that was a lot of people were speculating that was Adam Warlock. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Um, Yeah, so well, maybe the Sovereign make a lot of those cocoons, and there's another person out there named Adam Mage. I will tell you, I will tell you, there is an evil Adam Warlock. <gasps> is his name Adam Mage? No, his name is something completely different. It's like Roy. Hey, I'm hey. Roy. I'm the evil <laughs> Adam Warlock. No, it's like Magus or something like, or like Magnus, something like oh, that. Oh, so it's really close to Mage. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you want to say that, sure. Here's, here's he- my big question for you. I'm wondering if in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, are we finally going to get Nova? Well, the rumors are a swirling about Phase 5, even though it's so early to talk mm-hmm. about Phase 5. Uh, the rumors are a swirling that Nova and Thunderbolts are part of Phase 5. Thunderbolts has me very excited, and I know Nova has you very excited. Um, give me, so, give me Nathan Fillion as Richard Ryder, <laughs> and I will be, I will be the happiest man alive. Everyone right, wants it. Him, Kevin. I'm not the only one. Everyone was begging for it when Guardians of the Galaxy came out. They're all like, "Oh, are we finally gonna get, uh, freaking? Are we finally gonna get freaking uh, Nathan Fillion as Nova?" And Nathan Fillion's like, "Hey, if they call me, I'll do it." And and there was a big thing, and yeah, we all know how that ended. Somebody give that guy a leading role in a movie already. Jesus. 
Yeah, but, well, he's got a pretty busy TV career. I, I do have to admit that. He's got a pretty consistent and busy TV career, which I'm sure he makes a lot of money doing. So I'm sure he does. It would just be nice to, you know, meet somebody who's watched The Rookie so that <laughs> they could actually talk about it. Yeah, I went there. I went there. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's what we learned on the 12th in Disney Plus Day. Pretty much what we expected with a few little surprises thrown in there. I think for me, MVP was X-Men 97, just in terms of how out of nowhere it was. Um, yeah, and Moon Knight was looking pretty good. And so was She-Hulk's tracksuit. It's all yeah. looking spiffy. So change that logo back and we'll be golden. Anyways, mm-hmm. today is the 16th of November. And as they say... On uh, Guy Fox Day, remember, remember, the 16th of November, the No Way Home trailer came out. <laughs> I, I still can remember on 16th November, Dr. Octopus had... Was what a, it was all about. <laughs> was what it was all about. That's how the poem, the children's poem from Victorian London, that's how it goes, exactly. <laughs> um, so this trailer just came out, Ryan. Uh, we're probably going to skip this movie, right? It doesn't seem important. Doesn't mm. seem big. Mm-hmm. So, at, for a tra- as far as a trailer for a skippable movie goes, how are you feeling? <laughs> I gotta say, uh, first of all, it's like it basically they took all the fans like wants. I like because everyone's like, oh, I see, you know, so and so in this after watch after like like dissecting the trailer to like the uh, dissecting the trailer like to the last possible second. But here's the thing, I. I, I'm very excited. I think this is very cool. I think Sony's finally got their Sinister Six that boys wanted. They finally <laughs> did it after how many films? Um, I love that we're getting Alfred Malona. I love we're getting getting Defoe back. I love that we're getting Sandman. Um, uh, I obviously everyone's getting an up an MCU update, and it looks awesome. The story really baffles me, kind of a bit here like like i don't know if it's the edit or the the pitch uh but the pitch is like okay these villains are coming from different universes and their destiny is to kill like you have to kill them or something like that like you like they have to die um Mm -hmm. and it's like because they've all been killed by spider-man which is true they've Um, all died fighting spider-man yeah they've all died fighting spider-man Doc Ock fell under his own machine. Uh, Green Goblin got impaled by his glider. Sandman got turned into glass. No, Sand. Sandman is the only Raimi villain that didn't die. He sure? just, he, yeah, he, he was like, like washed I'm... away or something. Nah, he made uh, he made peace with them, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I fought you. I was mad." And then they're like, "It's cool, man, but Harry's dead. Can we have a moment?" He's like, "Yeah," and he just kind of blew away into the wind. Oh yeah, okay. I was gonna say I I've only seen that movie like twice, I think, in my entire life. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's it, I, it, I was not a fan. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then we get to see Lizard. Uh, so Lizards, but Lizard looks pretty much the same. But I'm curious if we're gonna get the, uh, Kirk Connors in that Electro. You know, not everyone loved Electro in in Spider Man Two. I am definitely one of them. I did not like what they did. However, I like what they did with the costume in this one because we actually get to see the electro, you know, mask kind of look, which was really cool. Um, The the story, yeah, the story is just baffling to me. I just don't know how they're going to do it. Um, And, of course, it looks like like MJ is going to have the same fate as Gwen by the looks of things. Um, I'm curious if I'm wondering if they're going to do what the Spider-Man cartoon did and is she going to fall into the the portal, like a portal to another multiverse thing? And then it's Spider-Man trying to find her again at some point. I think that would be pretty cool. I think that would be, lead to a good story. But, but final thoughts for me on my end that I'm going to summarize with here is uh, that the last scene, the very last scene, I think Kang's involved in this whole thing. Ooh, is it because the sky thingies were purple? But they were yeah. also like, they're also kind of like lightning bolts br- branching out. Uh-huh, okay. 
Interesting. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. I don't know where to begin with this. I, I think first of all, the look of these villains, Electro looks groovy, man. I really like this. This, I don't care. People can make fun of starfish face all they want. To me, that's Electro. Uh, and I will not to be, uh, not to be a big meanie here, but it's like the people who designed the villains in the Amazing Spider-Man movies were like, how can we make them as ugly as we possibly can? Um, and there yeah. you go. You you have a goblin, a rhino, an electro, and a lizard who look like roadkill. Um, yeah. And I was texting with James literally right after it came out. He messaged me and we were just talking about it. Um, and he said, he said uh, you know, the electro looks really good. I like, I like how he is. I said, yeah, they did a great job with Electro. Can't say the same for Lizard. He still looks just like green Voldemort with a tail. Um, <laughs> it's I mean, kind of like, you know, it's kind of like the 2000s when you know like a movie came out in the 2000s because they had like the leather and the weird glasses. It's yes. kind of like that. It's just kind of like, you know, it was made at a certain time when they thought that looked really good and it's not. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's uh, it's an odd choice. The thing that uh, I think is interesting is they did not touch Green Goblin. He yes. looks the same. That shocked me because I was like, if there was ever a movie villain that got, you know, made fun of for how they looked, I feel like Green Goblin got the most. You know, I, I still think the Raimi Green Goblin looked better, obviously, than the Mark Webb Green Goblin and look better than the electro but still i'm i'm baffled they didn't throw some purple in there uh i don't know i don't know i i mean i it kind of grows on you in a fun way i mean because defoe sells the performance like if you put anyone else in that suit mm -hmm. everyone yeah. would be like man that was terrible like what were you thinking but every time you hear that defoe voice and you hear the performance he gives it's like yes that's awesome can I hear your best Defoe Green Goblin it's right now? It's not going to happen. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I, I don't. I, <laughs> I, like, I, I honestly cannot do Defoe's voice. It's so genuine to himself <laughs> that like any impression I try is just, it's, it's just, I, it won't sound anything remotely close to it. Like, like all, all I can think of, even if I try it is like that scene where he's in the mirror and he's like, mm. so many good things happening to you. Like, that's that's the best you'll ever get from me. And that's not even remotely close to what he did. Oh, boy. All right. That's fair. I'm a little sad that I don't get to hear your Defoe. That's okay. <laughs> you did, though. I just did it. That's as close as you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I was just hoping you would play him in the movie. That's all. <laughs> um, so happen. we saw five villains. And... The whole Sinister Six thing is something that we've all just kind of been assuming. But whoever the sixth person is, if there is one, has not been shown yet. I'm still pulling for the Hobgoblin. Um, but here's the thing, right? I, those purple things we see, you say King, and I like that. I like where your head's at. I think it would be really, really neat if that is literally, we are going to get every Spider-Man villain coming out of those portals. Scorpion's going to come out. Rhino's going to come out. Chameleon. Kingpin, Kevin. Right? Right, Kevin? Kingpin's going to come out. Venom's going to come out. Carnage is going to come They're all going to be there. Morbius. Um, not for long, mind you. Just for like one big battle scene. Um, it'll probably be a messy scene like Endgame. You know, it won't be anything substantial, but... I have a feeling that's the way they're going. I think we will see Scorpion at least because they've been teasing him for two movies now. So I'm pretty sure we're going to get a Scorpion. Uh, but I that's the, but that's the other thing is we're getting a lot of Spider-Man villains from other movies, but we're not getting any from his from Tom Holland's. Um, so Vulture, Scorpion, mm. I haven't seen them, and and there could be a mysterious sixth villain we haven't seen. Or sorry a third villain that we ha haven't seen. Like we, we have, or sorry, Mysterio. We haven't seen Mysterio either. Right. Um, so 
so again, are we going to get a new villain? I think we should. I think we should get Scorpion at least. Uh, I think, or we should get Craven or something. But uh, you're also sure right, though. Craven. Like they, I pull every villain, like you know, from the from the thing. Heck, even give us Hobgoblin. Although I doubt we'll, I doubt we'll get it. There's no set. There's no setup for Hobgoblin at this point. Oh, he's going to be the best one. You watch. He's going to be the best one there. Um, all right. You're not going to get mad as Hobgoblin, dude. It's just not. I don't see it happening. No. Do you remember my theory? My theory is that it's not Ned. Oh yes, no, I don't, uh, I don't yeah. know. It's not gonna happen. It's, it's not gonna happen. Alternate Peter. Alternate Peter is the hobgoblin in a world where he never got bit by a spider and he became a bad kid. That's good. You wait and see. You wait and see. Mm. And then in, in the post credit scene of the movie, he flies his goblin glider to space and he meets Christine Everhart and she says, "Would you like to help me annihilate a few things?" And he says, "Yes, I would, because I'm the hobgoblin." <laughs> and then. They turn to the camera and they say, see, Ryan? And that's it. That's how it ends. I wrote the movie. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, so here's a question, because you know these things. That box that he tries to steal from Strange, and then Strange gets Ooh. all mad and goes all Beatles on him. What's happening there? What's that box? Uh, hey, honestly, the, the box, I don't know what it could be. To be honest with you, I'm sure there's a comic book fans out there that know it probably faster than I will. I think it could be a play on the Cosmic Cube, in a matter Ooh. of speaking. But I could be again. I'm, I'm I don't know. I honestly don't know what the box is. I'm gonna have to do research on that. It looks like his window. It's shaped like his window. It is shaped like his window, which that's supposed to be the uh, the Vashanti. It's the symbol of the Vashanti. Oh, okay. Uh, um, but I. I dig this uh, premise. Like these guys were all supposed to be killed by in a battle. Um, mm -hmm. Strange wants him to be, you know, to finish the job. You know, clean up his mess by killing them, and Spider Man doesn't kill. I think that's a cool idea. It becomes this fetch quest of supervillains. Like you got to go round them up. Scooby Doo, this crap. Yeah, Scooby Doo, this crap. Um, I will tell you though, the box is a heavy debated item uh mm. it's it's apparently uh it could tease uh it says that dr strange box and spider-man no way home trailer may tease its biggest secret in a brief moment during spider-man no way home strange pushes peter out of his uh body into the astral plane but peter's physical hand he is holding a box bearing the seal of the vishanti thank mm. you uh, and the same symbol on the eye of Agamotto and the Sanctum Centauri window. For now, there's no hint of what this box by me. Well, it does appear to have ties to the comic books. It could be a variation, either esta another established Marvel character or object, um, similar to how the staff of the Living Tribunal is named after a powerful causative being. Okay, so Mephisto confirmed is what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, I'm I'm just double checking the case. I missed it, but I don't. Yeah, again, you're right. There's something about the box, but nobody knows what it is yet. Uh, it, as as they end the article, they say, hopefully, it is truly something more than just a magic box. Hmm. Wow. Well, we are a month away to the day of when it comes out. Uh, that trailer said the tickets go on sale on the 29th, so I'm going to yep. be on top of that to grab ours. Um, and then that's it. Then it's Spider-Man time. Ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da. That's our next review. That's going to be our next thing. Wow. And then we have uh, our holiday special, which is going to be exciting. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, I guess we can announce that now, because I don't think we've announced it yet. And this is going to be... It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're familiar with the Rebel Scum Podcast uh, holiday specials, we tend to do this almost every year. We do ranking Star Wars. And we aggregate a bunch of ranking lists from people within the podcast or friends of the podcast and put it all together and use that as sort of a basis. We crunch those numbers. It's a very fun method. I think James invented it. And now there you have it. We have an average list of the ranked Star Wars films. There's only 11 of those. There's 26. 
Marvel ones, and we are doing them all. We're ranking the MCU. Uh, it's going to be really, really fun. I can't wait to get everybody's entries and crunch those numbers. Uh, we probably will not be including, uh, well, not probably, we will not be including No Way Home because we will probably end up recording the episode before it comes out just to be safe so we have it there in time for Christmas. That just makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect to see No Way Home on the list. I mean, it'll probably be number one on everybody's list if we're being honest. Could be. Depending on how it goes. Yeah, we'll see. But I'm really curious uh, to see what you put. I'm really curious to see what Anna put. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see what I put because I haven't even started mine yet, but uh, I have a vague idea. But that's what's coming, ranking the MCU uh, and expect that during the holiday season. That's right. It's going to be really good. Um, I would say that like it's kind of unfair to put No Way Home in there because it's just too it's fresh. It's too fresh. Yeah. Um, which will be interesting because like obviously the next year we'll, we'll do it again. What I have to say though, uh, which kind of ties everything together, I love, I, I love them both, don't get me wrong, but I have to say Disney Plus series are getting me a little more excited. And, and specifically around mm. Moon Knight and She-Hulk and Hawkeye, um, those shows are getting me really excited, especially after what Loki did. Um, the Marvel movie side, on the other hand, Shang-Chi was really cool, and it got, I was really excited for it. Widow, I was excited for it, but I was a little let down from the villain standpoint. Still think the movie's great. Uh, but again, did it have a lasting impact? I don't know. Um, and Eternals, a bit of a letdown there as well. Um, again, just overall, I think it's good. Do I think it's, again, does it live up to some of my favorites? No, not even close. Um, and then Spider-Man, I'm very excited for. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I just, I, I, the Disney Plus series seemed to have me a little more oomph, you know? Hmm. Interesting. Well, I kind of agree and I kind of don't. I think that the series, uh, as soon as something gets announced as a series, my first thought is, what is it about this story that works better as a series than a movie? Right. Um, so I'm just, it, it just kind of sends me down a rabbit hole of like, okay, what plans do they have for Moon Knight that are better served in this way and it doesn't make me more or less excited for it i think what it does is it makes the movies at least the way i look at it and this might be just me being weird but it makes the movies feel more special uh because we have now in 2021 a huge chunk more screen time of shows than we do of films. Right. Even after Spider-Man comes out. So it's kind of like uh, for every four shows, we're getting one movie. It's like when you open a, a pack of trading cards, you get a bunch of commons and then you get a rare. And there's one rare in that card and you're excited for the commons because they're all great. And those uncommons can be fantastic too. But the rare is at the back and you're just like, it's coming. Here it is. Here it is. Oh my God. And it's one I really wanted. So that's how this surplus of shows is making me feel. And I was hoping Star Wars would do the same until they canceled all their movies because they don't have their shit together. Um, but that's a whole topic for another day. But that's how I feel. That's fair. Well, either way, don't get me wrong. I'm excited for the movies, but for some reason, the Disney Plus series are just hitting for me just a little bit harder. And, I, and you know why, though? It's because I'm getting more appearances of characters in the shows than I am getting in the movies. Yes, that is true. They're packing in a lot of people. Um, and even like just little things like, I'm still so happy we got to see the Dora Milaje in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Like we right. weren't expecting it and they showed up like it was just, I love that stuff. So more of that. 
Um, Ryan, where can the people find you between now and a month from now when Spider-Man comes out? Uh, of course, you can find me on the Rebels Gun Podcast Network. And don't forget to hit that follow button so you can live up, or check out all our cool new content that we have coming out. But you can also check me out on twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. Uh, the new Halo, Halo multiplayer came out and it's free, free, free. You can play it for free. It is awesome. Um, so check it out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's where you can find me. Uh, pretty awesome. And then of course you can find me on Instagram. Uh, just had a new cooking in the kitchen video. If you do like those videos, make sure you check it out. Um, and, uh, yeah, that is primarily where you can find me on Instagram at Ryan or at, uh, yeah, Ryan J. Whitehead. Uh, and on Twitter, you can find me at Crusader Online, where I'll repost all the cool stuff that happened at Marvel. Ooh, guys, Ryan's cooking shows are phenomenal. Like, don't miss on those. Um, I, you can find me on Instagram at underscore, Andrew underscore Fantasia, and sometimes on Twitter. And you can find me on the Rebel Scum Podcast Network um, talking about the Star Wars stuff, which is slowly starting to trickle out very slowly. Uh, next year will be a Star Wars year from the sounds of it. So that's very nice to hear. And we'll uh, see you all in a month for holiday specials and Spider-Mans and possibly even more. Uh, it's going to be crazy. And Hawkeye uh, even sooner than that. Oh, so until we got to that. So you're going to see yeah. us that soon. Oh, my you're God. You're going to see yeah. us very soon. That's the 24th, I think. Yeah. Is it 20? Totally okay, so it's, it's coming less than 10 days. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So we got two episodes of that coming up in less than 10 days. Look forward to that then. Until then, everybody, please have... A marvelous day. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.